Okay, here we are at example two. It looks altogether much more exciting than Sally pulling a wagon. Uh, sorry, Sally. But uh, going skiing looks like lots of fun. And again, we're doing the constant velocity. So again, we know that it's going to be, the forces will be balanced. Um, uh, if I draw my force diagram over here, um, and I uh, again will say, okay, so I've got the uh, angle this way and that way. I will try to draw those. And so instead of x and y, because the motion, right, the motion is this direction, so the motion is that direction, so I'm going to call that direction parallel, parallel, and this direction perpendicular. And it's parallel to the ground and perpendicular to the ground. Um, and as well, on the previous question, I noted that x to the right was positive. So I'm going to say parallel in the direction of motion. I'm going to choose that direction to be uh, positive. And for this one, I'm going to choose this direction to be positive. So up up the, uh, like this direction will be negative, and, and, and this direction will be negative in the perpendicular section. So again, so this is the parallel, and this is perpendicular. So that's kind of like the x and the y, but it's parallel and perpendicular. And then, so later on when I do the um, when I get to this stage with the right the equations, then some will be in the positive direction, some will be in the negative direction. Okay, so let's consider the forces acting on this person here. So, well, people love to talk about the force of gravity first, so we'll put that one in there. I'll do nice and long here. I'll call this one the force of gravity uh, on, how about skier? On skier uh, by the earth. Um, what else do we have? Well, we're going to have this uh, normal force on skier by Earth. Uh, we're also going to have, if, it, if they're moving at a constant velocity, there's got to be some friction, otherwise they're going to be accelerating. Force of friction on the skier by um, the ground. Maybe I'll put, see if I can fit this over here, on skier by the ground. Oh, and oh, I just realized, force of normal on skier by, it's not really the earth, it's more like the, the ground, it's this, or the snow, or the hill, it's it's this surface right here that we're talking about. So they're, they're pushing this way on them, and then there's also a friction force that way. Okay. That's that's pretty well it. Now I, I drew my force of gravity, admittedly very large, um, probably too large because it's for scale wise. So okay, I'll tone it down a little bit, but I like to have it large for a reason because we're going to have to figure out the components of of the force of gravity. One is going to be parallel, one's going to be perpendicular. We're going to need these all balanced, right? So um, I'll use my I'll use my red, and I'm going to say okay, I'll draw one here. So this will be f the force of gravity in the perpendicular direction and then in the parallel direction. This will be in the parallel force of gravity in the parallel direction. Uh, so th this diagram can be a little bit tough. I could also draw this parallel one over here too. And then it's easier to see that these two are at right angles and that the force of gravity parallel is equal to the force of friction. Uh, you know, those two are equal because we need to make a triangle here because we're going to have to do our trig. I'll draw that again because it disappeared. We're going to have to do our trig. So um, those are those two. If the skier, uh, we're good with the forces. So let's just go on. Um, the next one says, oh, we'll do equality marks. So this is the same as this one and these, this with that one, okay, because it's at constant velocity. If the skier has a mass of 80 kilograms, find the skier's weight. Okay, so we said the force of gravity is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram multiplied, in this case, uh, by the mass, which was 80 kilograms. So my kilograms are going to cancel out, and I'm going to get this equal to 800 newtons. Write an equation for the forces parallel to the slope. Well, in the in the positive direction, so you know 
this is the positive direction parallel I've got FG parallel so I'm going to say FG parallel in the negative direction so I'll subtract force of friction and since it's constant velocity they're balanced I'm going to say equals to zero how about for the ones perpendicular well perpendicular again I can look at my equality marks and I'm going to say that the positive direction positive direction is this way so the normal force minus because it's in the negative direction FG perpendicular is equal to zero cool uh, find the values of each of the forces in the force diagram okay so uh, clearly I got to figure out this this triangle here so I'm going to just draw this a little bit bigger so I've got this is my force of gravity uh, I'll write it over here force of gravity and we figured that out is now equal to 800 and then I've got these two components I've got this component here and this component here and this was 90 degrees and this one it was FG perpendicular and this one was FG parallel so here's what I'm going to tell you is that this 22 degrees here this 22 degrees here we got to figure out where to, to put this um, if I draw the angle even more accurately kind of like you know a very slight angle of 22 degrees then what would that look like for for this diagram when I draw the diagram it would kind of be like this uh, and then when I think about okay force of gravity is straight downwards and I've got this triangle okay so now that I've redrawn uh, this this diagram with the angle just a little bit more acute a smaller angle than the original diagram the reason why I did that is I, I, I want to think about this triangle and where does the 22 degrees go like the 22 degrees would be you know like from from this part that's the 22 degrees where in this triangle does the 22 degrees go so the answer is and I think now when you look at if I draw it even a smaller angle is you're going to realize that it's this angle there so this 22 degrees is going to be equal to this 22 degrees over there so that's where my 22 degrees goes so sometimes where I think oh it could be you know you got sort of two choices it could be like where I put the check or or it could be it could be in that spot over there and in my mind when I draw the angle even more s smaller then I start to realize what effect that has on my triangle it makes this part smaller so I realize that this is 22 degrees so hopefully that helps you so meanwhile that means that this angle over here is 22 degrees so now we're going to be again using our sine and our cosine to figure out FG perpendicular and FG parallel so force of gravity or let's just say the sine of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite side so the opposite of 22 is FG parallel divided by the hypotenuse which is 800 newtons so FG parallel is equal to 800 times the sine of 22 degrees which one might get my calculator out I think it's uh, 299.7 it's pretty close to 300 newtons uh, if I do instead of the sine now I do the cos of 22 degrees is going to be equal to the here's adjacent so that is FG perpendicular over my hypotenuse which is the 800 newtons so FG perpendicular is going to be equal to 800 newtons multiplied by this cos of 22 degrees and when I plug that into my calculator I think I get 742 newtons okay so find the values of each of the forces I'm going to just go put those in I'm going to say all right so that means that uh, this one FG parallel this is the one that I said was 300 okay um, this one was 800 this one over here was my uh, what was it 740 
So what does that tell me about my normal force and my force of friction? Well, the normal force is going to be equal to Fg perpendicular. So my normal force over here is going to be equal to 740 newtons. And my force of friction is going to be equal to my 300 newtons. It's kind of messy, isn't it? So I could go and just sort of draw it one more time. And I could say, OK, so I've got my uh, well, what would happen? I would have the force of gravity this way, the normal force this way, force of friction this way, and I have got these two here. So this is just a quick one with less information, but it's, it's less cluttered. I can see the 800, the 740, and the 300 newtons. I hope that that was helpful, and always I look forward to seeing you in class.